Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're in the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew today. I just told Rudy we need one of those really long podcasts rather than a short one. So we're going to give you the appetizer, not the whole course meal, on the return of Christ and the end of time. So verse 17, Jesus is telling his disciples, when you see the desolating sacrilege spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, then let the reader understand, says Matthew, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains, and the one on the housetop must not go down to take things from the house, the one who in the field must not turn back and get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant, those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be on a Sabbath uh, or in winter. Uh, The time will be a great suffering, such as not been since the beginning of the world until now and will never be. And if those days had not been cut short, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, the days will be cut short. If anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or look, there he is, don't believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I've told you beforehand, so if they say, look, go to the wilderness, don't go out. If they say, look, he's in the inner rooms, don't believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will come be the summing of the kind of man. Wherever the corpse is, corpse is, excuse me, there the eagles will gather. Let me stop there and thank you all for listening to me read a long passage that I don't read so well. Rudy, you're our expert. Talk to us about this. Well, when you see the abomination talked about in the in the prophet Daniel, Daniel uh, Wondered, heard this, and you, if you want to read about this, it's really chapter seven through the end of the book of Daniel. Okay. Daniel's only got twelve chapters, so seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Uh, but so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, the just, you know, when Jesus was saying to the scribes and the Pharisees about what makes you holy, mm-hmm. are you swearing by the one that is in the temple? Are you swearing by the gold? Are you swearing by the altar? Basically, that Jesus is interpreting the end of the world into those kind of practices because the evil one is actually going to take the place where God meets with the world for himself. Right. And that's, you know... It, that is the abomination of desolation. of desolation. Absolutely. Now, if I was now being a Jew, and say I was an Orthodox Jew of today, the first three years of this would be wonderful to me because now the earth is righteous because we're doing sacrifices and we're being cleansed of sin because they do not understand that this was all pointing to the Messiah dying for their, for their sins. Isaiah 53, there's a partial hardening on Israel that, so that they cannot understand this because if they would have understood it, they wouldn't be left to restart the sacrificial system And it takes somebody to start it. And in my opinion, there's grace on every Jew that didn't come to the Lord because we all are standing, every Jew of today is standing on the the shoulders of all the Jews throughout history. Otherwise, we couldn't do what our service was at the end. And therefore, it has to be a high priest, there has to be a red heifer, uh, because you have to be cleansed from death to be able to officiate in the temple. All of these things, basically, that we don't, we haven't read for centuries, is going gonna, is gonna to be animated into our lives. And it's going to help build our faith. But more than that, it's going to help build the faith of the world. And... Uh, so, 
when we see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel because in the prophecy of Daniel it is given a voice and it's a and it's a statue of the one that had died from a head wound and came back to life and the statue actually begins to talk and has everybody to bow down to it uh, this is the fake resurrection you'll not see me again until you say blessed is he and that he is Jesus who came in the name of the Lord he's the one that actually fulfilled the prophecies mm -hmm. that's good the interesting thing is here is it's like so when you see the desolation of, sec of, uh, of the abomination of desolation spoken of the prophet Daniel, it says run, but it never tells you where to run to. Right. But the one thing it does tell you is that these days, if they were not cut short, even the elect would be lost. That means they're going to be pretty rough. A absolutely. Pretty and, is an understatement. Yeah, and so... We can't think, as soon as it gives us some rough skin, mm -hmm. that this is as bad as it's going to get. It's right. going to get pretty bad. Yeah. So I'm going I'm to move us through a little bit. And this is, we could spend hours on this, but let's start with verse 30 to 29. So immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and the tribes of the earth will mourn, for and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He'll send out his angels with a loud trumpet, and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. So talk to us about, about that, Rudy. Well, this is how he cuts the day short, or even the elect would not would not be saved. Right. Basically, there's no one on earth that could stop this deluge of warfare. Right. Uh, when he comes and the thousands upon thousands that are with him, uh, he puts an end to this war. Uh -huh. And but we have to wait. You know, we just have to wait for that. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will, will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven. These are angels being basically thrown out of heaven. Okay. And they're, they come to earth. Uh, and, it, it, and really it does look as though in my mind's eye that we're going to lose. But when we... When I look back to the miraculous battles that David won, mm -hmm. and actually when I look at the miraculous battles that Israel has won since 1949, mm -hmm. there's some semblance of understanding that God is fighting for them. Mm -hmm. You wonder what happened in the Holocaust. Why wasn't he fighting for them then? I don't know. Sure. Well, there's, listen, there is a ton in these verses that, uh, that we don't know. One thing we do know is we can walk with the Lord today, and every day we're holding his hand, he's going to help us. Why don't you? Not, not only when he's holding our hand, we will be helped, and he's our only refuge. Right. I mean, we say that like a commercial right. today. But there's going to come a time where that is going to be more real than us putting our fingers together. You got it. You got to pray for us. Father, uh, Bob said something about his prayer life being confused this morning. We are all confused. Uh, yet, Lord, we know that you're the one that brings things to order. So humbly, Father, we just, I pray for the people listening to this podcast. Help us, Lord, 
by your spirit to get a sense of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Give us the stability of your presence mm -hmm. to live our lives. Yes. Help us use it, Father, to build your kingdom here on earth. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we really thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>